Peace and love, black family. This is the Prince of Pan-Africanism, Dr. Umar Johnson, International Ifa Tunde, most requested black scholar on the face of the earth. I'm coming to you live today from the Unapologetically African Library, which is my own personal library. And I'm coming to you live today because I have been looking at YouTube clippings for the past week. And I have been seeing a lot that I take issue with. When my good friend, brother Tyrese, went public with his child custody, child support situation, a lot of you thought it was funny. And then when we found out over the past 24 hours that our good brother Meek Mill from North Philadelphia, who lived right across the street from me on 18th Street, okay, that a black female judge violated his parole or probation, whatever it was, which could potentially lead to him spending two to four years in prison. When I went to YouTube, I noticed that a lot of you thought it was funny. And what really bothered me about the situation involving my brother Tyrese and my brother Meek, and I'm only using them to as symbols, okay? This conversation is not about Tyrese. This conversation is not about Meek. This conversation is about a situation that those two brothers are dealing with that affects millions of black men all across the country. Tyrese's child support situation, Tyrese's custody situation is symptomatic and symbolic of what black men go through all the time. And, you know, the, the fortunate thing in this, because our brother was selfless enough to reveal his hurt to the entire community, it now comes up for discussion. And we're gonna have a discussion about it today. The fact that Meek Mill, okay, a world famous hip hop recording artist was unjustifiably, okay, unjustifiably had his probation violated by a black female judge who comes from the same streets of North Philadelphia as we do for two cases that were thrown out the cases that brought him before the judge were thrown out. Riding a dirt bike in New York gets you four years in jail, but killing Trayvon Martin gets you acquitted. Killing Sandra Bland gets you acquitted. Killing Philando Castile and Tamir Rice gets you acquitted, but riding a dirt bike will get you four years. And you the same Negroes who will turn around and say Colin Kaepernick was disrespectful to the United States flag for taking a knee. Colin Kaepernick was disrespectful to the United States flag for taking a knee. I beg your pardon? You want me to stand for a flag that will send a man to jail for riding a dirt bike? You want me to stand for a flag that will disproportionately send black men to prison for crimes that they did not commit and then keep them in prison without a jury of their peers, ultimately sentencing many of them to life in jail and in many cases, the death penalty. So we're going to have a conversation today and you all will be able to call in. Yes, I'm not going to talk long. I want to hear from you and the number that you're going to call. And you're not going to call it right now because I'm not going to answer the phone. The number you can call in is 8444 Dr. Umar. The number that you can call in is 844 Dr. Umar. D R U M A R. Again, 8444 D R U M A R. Let's look at some statistics. Now, I want to check black men for a minute. I want to check black men for a minute. I think it is very disgusting, very trifling, and very cowardly for black men to make videos on YouTube making fun of our brothers. What the hell is funny about a man who cannot see his child? What the hell is funny about a man being arrested for four years for riding a dirt bike. In case you don't understand, Meek Mill is a father. He goes to jail. His child is separated from his or her father. You understand what I'm saying? So there's nothing funny about that. And as black men, I thought we once had a code of respect 
that we lived by. It's okay to constructively criticize somebody. It's okay to constructively criticize somebody, but to make fun at another black man's unfortune. I didn't see a lot of black women doing this. I saw a lot of black men doing this. You weak, simp, soft, Duncan Hines, no principle having Negroes are making YouTube video on top of YouTube video, making fun of black men who go to jail, making fun of black men who can't see their children. Let us be clear about something. Let us be absolutely clear about something. What is, let's be, what are the two biggest issues affecting black men in America after police genocide? What are the two biggest issues affecting black men in America after police genocide? You know what those two issues are? Child support and criminal sentencing. Child support and criminal sentencing. After police genocide, child support and custody. I'll put them together. Child support and custody and criminal sentencing and probation. Tyrese situation is a symbol. It's not about Tyrese. It's not about Tyrese. It about, it's about what Tyrese situation symbolizes. The millions of black men who are being forced to pay high amounts of child support or amounts of child support that they cannot afford to pay. And then at the same time, not being allowed to see their children. And then at the same time, not being allowed to see their children. The game has changed. The game has changed. For those of you who are in the child support game, you know that approximately 10 to 15 years ago, many states rewrote the child support law and they separated custody from child support. For those brothers who pay child support, you know what I'm talking about. In the 80s, in the 80s, if a woman didn't let you see your child, she didn't get no money. If a woman didn't let you see your child, she didn't get no money. So guess what they did in the 90s with the Bill Clinton crime bill, although this was not officially a part of the crime bill, unofficially it was. I'm going to say it again. Although child support was not officially a part of the 1994 Bill Clinton crime bill, unofficially it was. These things didn't happen together by coincidence. But they didn't want to make it obvious that they were going to criminalize black men under the banner of child support. They didn't want to make it obvious that they were going to start criminalizing black men under the banner of child support. So they simply changed the laws, but didn't include it in the 1994 Bill Clinton crime bill. That's when the game then changed. So Tyrese represents that. Our brother represents that. He's a symbol because he's successful. And we love our brother. He's a symbol of what can happen. And, and by it happening to him, it shows that no matter how educated you are, no matter how successful you are, the racism and the child support criminal industrial complex is just as intense as it is in the traditional criminal in industrial complex. And then Meek Mill, so Ch Tyrese symbolizes the child support custody issue that black men are dealing with. And, 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 and Tyrese symbolizes, okay, Tyrese symbolizes, excuse me, Tyrese symbolizes the child support and custody issue that black men are dealing with. And Meek Mill symbolizes the unfair sentencing and parole and probation laws that black men have to deal with. Meek Mill symbolizes the unfair sentencing and probation and parole violations that black men have to live with. Now, some of you weak simp Negroes making videos about Meek are talking about how he contributed, how he contributed to his own uh, probation being violated. He contributed to it, right? See, this is when we like blaming the vi He contributed to it, Okay. So since you believe Meek Mill is back in jail because he was irresponsible, for those of you coons who believe Meek Mill is back in jail because he was irresponsible, let me ask you a question. Let's do a quick bait and switch. Let me ask you a question. 
let's say that Eminem or Justin Bieber, let's say Eminem or Justin Bieber violates their parole or probation. They go out of town to another city. They ride a dirt bike. They get into a scuffle at the airport with some aggressive fans. And I don't know what happened one way or the other. Okay. Or they were caught in another city without permission. Justin Bieber, Eminem. Riding dirt bikes in another city. Got a little scuffle at the airport. Was found in another city. You shouldn't have been there. Do you think if Eminem went to court yesterday for those offenses, which were thrown out, which were thrown out for a probation term that is almost served. Meat case go back to 0809. My brother is almost done. Contrary to what you coons want to put out in the world of social network where information is never validated, the brother has largely kept his nose clean. His parole is almost over. His probation is almost over. He's almost done the 10 years. So contrary to what you're putting out there, although the brother is not perfect, none of us are, he almost completely completed the entire term. Do you think if that was Eminem, Eminem would have been, would the black female judge have sent Eminem to jail for two to four years for riding a dirt bike in New York City? That's the question. That's the question. If Justin Bieber violated his parole by riding a dirt bike and having an airport scuffle and being in a city without permission of the probation officer, do you think a black female judge would have sent Justin Bieber to prison? I think we all know the answer is no. I think we all know the answer is no. So if you can say systematically, that a white rapper would have been treated differently, then you are also admitting that Meek Mill did not play a part in this. And what really played a part in this was systematic inequity, systematic bias, systematic racism, and systematic discrimination against all black people, and particularly black males. We're going to handle this today. We're going to handle this today. And for you black men, who love making videos about other black men's mishaps, shame on your ass. Shame on your ass. I don't find nothing funny about a brother hurting because he can't see his child. I don't find nothing funny about a brother being sent to jail for two to four years being separated from his child. Y'all think it's funny. That's what's wrong with social network. Because too many coons who don't have anything of substance to live for and nothing constructive to do will sit on the internet and Facebook and Twitter and all these other platforms all day long and do nothing but attempt to destroy the work of other people. Of other people. I'm going to let y'all call in in a minute. And the number to call in is 8444-DR-UMAR. 844-DR-UMAR. Let me get my juice. Okay. Okay. So I want Tyrese to know he did nothing wrong. But he did do something that is going to help because it's going to force the conversation. Now, here's my wish for Tyrese and Meek Mill. Here's my wish. Because of the platform that they have. Because of the platform that they have. I'm hoping that Tyrese turns his situation into a crusade that other black men struggling from the same set of circumstances can rally behind and fight for a change. So I'm asking Tyrese that once his situation is resolved, and I know it will be, he will be blessed. He's a good brother. I know it will be. I'm hoping that he will turn this into a crusade about the unfair and unjust child custody and support laws that are out on the books. And I'm hoping Meek Mill, once justice is served, and we will pray that it will be, okay, that he turns this into a crusade to fight against the unjust and disproportionate criminal sentencing laws that are sending so many black men to jail, sending them back to jail, and keeping them there. That's what I'm hoping. That's what I'm hoping. Let's look at the statistics. Let's look at the statistics. Let's provide a little bit of a context for this. 
according to the United States government, they are owed $115 billion in child support. The government is claiming that there are men and women, non-custodial mothers, mostly men, but some women, non-custodial mothers, who owe Uncle Sam, who owe Uncle Sam $115 billion in child support. This is what the government claims. Now, check this out. The government says we are owed $115 billion in child support. But they are owed this $115 billion in child support by men who earn less than $10,000 a year. Did y'all hear what I just said? The average man in child, the average brother in child support earns less than $10,000 a year. What in the hell is a black man with a felony who can't find a job even though he wants one? What in the hell is a black man with a felony trying to find a job but can't find one? What is he in child support court for? And for my beautiful black sisters, the reason I subtitled today's conversation, because it's going to be a conversation, but the reason I subtitled today's conversation are black women. White supremacy's secret weapon against black men. Are black women white supremacy's secret weapon against black men? Are black women white supremacy's secret weapon against black men? And I know this ain't all sisters. Most of my sisters are decent sisters. I love all y'all. But when we look at these symbolic cases of Reese and Meek, in Reese's case, it's a black mother keeping him from his child. In Meek Mill case, a black female judge violated him back to jail. So we have to talk about this. We're not saying all black women, but we got to talk about this. Because increasingly, when I visit America's university campuses to speak to our youth, and I'll be speaking at two campuses next week, increasingly, black men are afraid to trust sisters because the white man has empowered them to crush the lives and careers of black males if they so choose. It ain't all black women. Just like all black men ain't bad. But we got to have the conversation. We got to have the conversation because there's so many black men out here and the population is growing and I don't agree with them at all. Because you know my position. A, a black man needs to be with a black woman. But so many brothers are saying, Doc, we hear you, but look at what my baby mom did to me. Doc, we hear you, but look at what my ex-wife did to me. Doc, we hear you, but look at what my black judge did to me. So let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. So the government says it is owed $115 billion in child support. But it is owed this money by men who earn less than $10,000 a year. Let's keep on going. According to government statistics, as of New Year's Eve 2016, which is December 31st of 2015, as of December 31st of 2015, there were 1.5 million people in federal prison. 1.5 million people in federal prison and 50% of them had children under 18 years old. 50%. So, so if 50% of the people in prison have children under 18, that means there's a lot of child support cases. There's a lot of child support cases that are finding their way into the prison. And what I find to be so criminally unfair about the child support law what I find to be so criminally unfair about the child support law is the fact that when you go to jail, when you go to jail, whether it was for child support or not, you have cases that are child support related and you have cases that are not child support related. But regardless of why you are in jail, when you go to jail, 
a black man's child support continues to add up. You got to do 10 years in prison. Guess what? Your child support continues to add up. And then after you get out of jail, you have to keep on paying for the child support after you get out of jail. How unfair is that? I got to do 10 years for breaking a law that I didn't even break. The only reason why I'm in jail is because I couldn't afford a good enough lawyer. So I had to settle for a public pretender. And the public pretender said, I know this probably wasn't your drugs. I know these probably wasn't your guns. But the prosecutor is telling me to tell you that if you do not take a guilty plea, even though you are innocent, if you do not take a guilty plea, even though you are innocent, okay, and if you plead guilty, we're going to give you two years. You never get a job again. You ain't getting accepted to no colleges. You ain't getting no financial aid. In some places, you won't be able to vote. You'll never be allowed to legally own a gun again. But we're going to give you a plea of two years. And if you take this plea, you'll be home in 24 months. And you say, but I'm innocent. Those were not my guns. The white police officer planted the guns on me. And then the prosecutor tells your public pretender, who's probably his brother-in-law. The prosecutor tells your public pretender, who's probably his brother-in-law, that if he don't take the plea, if you don't take the plea, you're going to jail for 20 years. Now, come on. Come on. If Dr. Umar Johnson gets a gun put on me and I don't have no previous record of incarceration, if I get a gun, somebody plants a gun on me and the prosecutor tells my lawyer, we'll give Dr. Umar two years if he pleads guilty, he'll never be a certified school psychologist again. That Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy kissed that goodbye. He'll never, ever be a principal again. He'll never, ever be a therapist again. Owning the school, he can forget, forget that, but he can be home in two years. But if he don't take the plea, if he don't take the plea, he going down for 20 years because of how many guns we caught in the trunk. Guess what Umar Johnson going to have to think about? 20 years? I'm 40. 20 years, I'll be 60. Guess what Umar Johnson got to think about? I'm going to have to think about copping a plea for a crime I didn't commit just because I don't want to risk it. I don't want to risk losing in the trial. I can't afford a good lawyer. I'm stuck with a public pretender. I can't afford a good lawyer. I'm stuck with a public pretender. What you think Umar Johnson going to do with my six degrees? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cop the damn plea. I'm a cop the damn plea because I know the criminal justice system is designed to destroy me. I said, I know the criminal justice system is designed to destroy me. And that's why I'm unapologetically African. Because I fight for black men who can't fight for themselves. I speak for black men who can't speak for themselves. When I go into these prisons, and I'm probably the only psychologist in Philadelphia history, certified school psychologist in Philadelphia history, who has spoken in every prison in the city of Philadelphia. I'm going to say it again. I am the only doctor of psychology in Philadelphia history who has ever spoken for free, no money. And I don't say that for kudos. I saw it to let you Negroes know I'm not no hustler. I've spoken in every prison in Philadelphia. Okay. I would have to accept the plea, brothers and sisters. I would have to accept the plea. It's designed to destroy us. I speak for those who can't speak for themselves. I speak for those who can't speak for themselves. In fact, hold tight. And see, I got a whole bunch of these prison mail brothers and sisters locked up behind bars who write to me on a regular basis. And I want to apologize to them brothers and sisters behind bars because Dr. Umar Johnson is so busy keeping our kids from going into jail. 
I'm so busy keeping our children from going into jail by keeping them out of the special ed to prison pipeline that I can't always respond to these letters, but I will start writing y'all back. My New Year's resolution in 2018 is to start responding to the letters that I get from brothers and sisters who are locked down. Here's one letter. Okay, Dr. Umar, and this is coming from a brother who's locked down in Lincoln, Nebraska. This letter is coming from a brother who's locked down in Lincoln, Nebraska. Brother Umar, you have been such a motivating factor in my path of change. I conduct myself in a manner now that those in my past wouldn't know who I am now. I was privileged to hear you speak in Omaha, Nebraska on 24th and Link. I've been avoiding some legal issues, but as you can see, I've come to face them now. These Europeans play a dirty game, though they make up rules as they go to keep their foot on your neck. Let me repeat what my brother said. Shout out to Omaha, Nebraska, hometown of Malcolm X. I will see you in Black History Month. Shout out to Omaha, Nebraska, hometown of Malcolm X. God willing, the prince will see you in Black History Month. He said, these Europeans play a dirty game. They make up rules as they go to keep their foot on your neck. In open court, the judge practices color of law, which is a federal felony. I'm not used to maintaining my composure when things don't go in my favor, but I'm doing it, Dr. Umar. I've been on some kind of lockdown for 96 hours. I've been on lockdown for 96 hours. I'm telling you what our brothers and sisters are going through. I'm reading it right here. Support mail to Dr. Umar from across the world. I am not a hotepper. I am a freedom fighter. I am not an intellectual masturbator. I am a freedom fighter. Do not confuse me with conscious community con artists. Do not confuse me. I am a worker bee. I am a worker bee. Let's keep on going. I've been on some kind of lockdown for 96 hours without the ability to physically exercise in the yard or visit the law library. I've yet to even been able to clean my cell or send clothes to the laundry. Y'all hear that? They don't even let our brother wash his behind. They don't even let him wash his clothes. Can't even exercise. Can't even go for a walk. We cannot forget those we cannot see. Out of sight should never be out of mind. Out of sight should never be out of mind. I'm not able to clean my cell or send clothes to the laundry. No worries though. I'm going to keep my mind focused and keep mental note of the cruel and unusual punishment being handed out by these so-called authority figures. If at all possible, my brother, could you maybe send a brochure of knowledge, which is my food, and I have become a glutton for knowledge. Any knowledge that you would recommend that is good, I have yet to hear from you yet, Dr. Umar. Please write me back. The African currency is so deep, the information you shared. You also taught me about Dr. George Washington Carver. I had no knowledge that Dr. George Washington Carver was castrated by the European family that raised him. We are honestly dealing with some sick people, Dr. Umar. One more topic I would love for you to elaborate on, okay, is polygyny. One in 13 ratio, one out of every three black males is guaranteed to be in a jail or prison in their life with a 94% recidivism rate. 94% recidivism rate. Most of us who go to jail will go back to jail. Most of us who go to jail will go back to jail. Most of us who go to jail will go back to jail because the system is not colorblind. The system is not colorblind. The system is designed to destroy you. I think we need to save and protect our race by dating our own. I think we need to save and protect our race by dating our own. Can't wait to get a response from your direction. A revolution in my life. This is real. I'm not going to call the brother's name that's confidential. I got boxes of these. I got boxes of these. So I'm going to have to start writing the brothers and sisters back who are behind bars.
Let's go over a few more statistics before I open up the telephone. Okay. Criminal contempt for failure to pay child support. Criminal contempt for failure to pay child support. Criminal contempt for failure to pay child support. See, in the 90s, when they revised the Bill Clinton crime bill, they were also revising the child support code. They wasn't slick. See, Bill Clinton had you focused on drugs and guns. Bill Clinton had you focused on drugs and guns, but while Bill Clinton was setting up the three strikes in you out, while Bill Clinton was setting up the mandatory minimum sentencing, Bill Clinton also did what? He cut millions of mothers off of welfare. He cut millions of black mothers off of welfare. But check it out. This is what the government did. They say, listen, we can't put these women out on the street. We got to do something, but we don't want to give them no more money. So they said, we're going to revamp the child support law. We're going to revamp the child support law. What we're going to do, we're going to separate custody from support. If these black mothers don't want to let the father see their child, we don't care. If these black mothers don't want to let the father see their kept children, we don't care. If these black mothers don't want to let the child see their fathers, we don't care. This is what the government said. Separate. Because as long as you keep child support with custody, a lot of men won't have to pay because these trifling, some of these trifling sisters, some of them, most sisters are not, the few that are, okay, are not going to let them see their kids, which means he won't have to pay. So what we got to do is we're going to separate child support from custody. We're going to separate child support from custody so he got to pay the money whether he sees his child or not. So when we cut the black women off of welfare, when we cut the black women off of welfare, when we cut the black women off of welfare, we're going to make black men pick up the tab. And then they said, well, wait a minute. How are we going to do that? Because a lot of black mothers claim they don't know who the father is. So the government said they know who the father is. They just doing that to protect their baby daddy. So what you're going to do is you're going to tell the single black mom that if you don't come in here with a social security number or a name and an address, if you don't come in here with a social security number or a name and an address, if you don't come back with a social security number or a name or an address, you ain't getting no welfare check. You ain't getting no food stamps. You ain't getting no access card. You ain't getting no Section 8. And you might not get no WIC. So they basically bullied black women into telling on black fathers. The sisters was trying, some of the sisters was trying to protect the black father because she knew he ain't have no job. She knew that man couldn't protect. I'm talking about the good sisters right now. The good sister said, I'm not going to tell the white man on the father of my child because the father of my child wants to do better. The father of my child is trying to do better and I am not going to turn him into the white man. But the white man told her, if you don't turn him in, you ain't getting no support. So the sister, not wanting to expose the brother, but at the same time need to feed her child, need some housing, she went ahead and turned the brother in. This is what they did. This is what they did. And then they came up with another law. Then they came up with another law. OK, the permanent paternity laws, the permanent paternity laws, which is what I call them. The permanent paternity laws is the laws that you have in most states. Pennsylvania has it. If you live in Philly, Pennsylvania has it. If a black man signs the child's birth certificate. If the black man signs the child's birth certificate. If the black man signs the child's birth certificate and finds out later that he is not the father. All of this is the 90s. This was part of the Bill Clinton crime bill. They just didn't put it in the law. In the 90s, they came out with this new law. If you sign paternity and find out later that you are not the father, you will remain the legal father of record for the rest of that child's life. How in the hell can you claim to me that there is anything fair about making a man pay child support for a child after he finds out he is not the
the biological father. That is criminally insane. That is criminally insane. And then even when the baby mom goes down there and says, he's not the dad, we took the uh, blood test. I want to get him out the system. Guess what the white man tells your baby mom? The white man tells your baby mom, we don't need you no more. We got this. We don't need you no more. We got this. We don't need you no more. We got this. So now the sister tried to help get the brother out. And the white man said, we used you to get him. The white man looks the black woman in the face and says, we used you to get him. You see? See, Bill Clinton didn't just give us three strikes and you out. Bill Clinton just didn't give us mandatory minimum sentences. Bill Clinton just didn't kick millions of black women off of welfare. While he was doing that, they was coming up with the permanent paternity law. Sign the birth certificate and you the father forever. While they was doing that, they came up with this new rule where she better show up with a name and an address or a social security number or you ain't getting no health care. You better show up with a name and an address or a social security number or your baby won't get no health care. They bullied black women into helping them incarcerate black men. They bullied black women into helping them incarcerate black men. This is what they did. These are the facts, and they are undisputed. Check this out. In 2009, 15%, and this was 2009, so this is almost 10 years ago. So we know the number is higher today. 2009, 15% of all county jail inmates were there for failure to pay child support. In 2009, 15% of all men in the county jail were simply there because they could not afford to pay child support. Now, check this out. And you know the number is higher for black men. You know the number is higher for black men. Now, check this out. According to the Federal Office of Child Support Enforcement, the Federal Office of Child Support Enforcement, the Federal Office of Child Support Enforcement, according to the Federal Office of Child Support Enforcement, 2011, 2011, right? So that's seven years ago. They came up with something known as civil contempt based on the non-custodial parent's ability to pay. Civil contempt and criminal non-support. Civil contempt is when you don't pay your child support. Civil contempt is when you don't pay your child support. Okay? Criminal non-support is the fact that you can be charged with a felony for not paying child support. Not paying your child support in many states is a felony offense. Are black women white supremacy's secret weapon against the black man? Are black women white supremacy's secret weapon against the black man? Some black women. Most of our sisters support us. Some black women. See, I want to hear from y'all in a little bit. Because I want to know who is responsible when a child is born to a black man who doesn't have the ability to pay. Who's responsible for that? Is the brother responsible because you shouldn't have made a baby you can't take care of? Or is the sister responsible because why are you making babies with a man who cannot pay? Are they both responsible, which is true. I would say they're both responsible, but that still doesn't put food in the baby's mouth. That still don't put a roof over the baby's head. If we don't want black men in child support, what is the black community going to do to pick up the slack? Because, see, we want to keep talking about black men, but we don't want to talk about the black church. We keep talking about black men, but we don't want to talk about the black church. We keep talking about black men, but we don't want to talk about the black church that got all this money and don't put no black men to work. 
The black church got all this money and don't want to put no black men to work. The black church can solve this whole problem if they would start caring about the family instead of caring about their bank accounts. I said the black church could help us solve this problem if they would start caring about the black family instead of caring about their bank accounts. The Federal Office of Child Support Enforcement. Let's keep on going. There's a Supreme Court case that brothers need to know about. There's a Supreme Court case that brothers need to know about. And that case is Turner versus Rogers, 2011. It says that if a black man is in jail, if a black man is in jail and he has a child support order, I want my brothers to listen up. Listen up, black men. Listen up, black men. If you go to jail, and you have a child support order, the courts cannot treat the fact that you are in jail as voluntary unemployment. The white man has created something known as voluntary unemployment. They say that if a man voluntarily chooses not to work, he can be charged with child contempt of child support and charged with a felony. They call it Voluntary unemployment. Here's the question I want to ask y'all. What black man you know is voluntarily unemployed? Let's just handle this shit. What black man you know voluntarily wants to go hungry? Voluntarily wants to be homeless? Voluntarily don't want no health care? Voluntarily don't want a roof over his head. What black man you know? I don't know none. And I know millions of black men across. I don't know of a black, I ain't found a black man yet who voluntarily wants to be homeless, voluntarily wants to be hungry, and voluntarily wants to be naked. Can somebody please explain to Dr. Umar Johnson what in the hell is voluntary unemployment? What in the hell is voluntary unemployment? See, these, these words, they love making up words. They love making up words to confuse black people. Reverse racism. What in the hell is reverse racism? In order for reverse racism to exist, in order for reverse racism to exist, that means the black man and woman have to be able to, to invade the institutions that white people control, take them over, okay, and then reverse the system of disproportionality, bias, discrimination, and racism. We have to invade the criminal justice system. We have to invade the medical system. We have to invade the economic system. We have to invade the legal system. We have to invade the political system. We have to invade the media system. We have to take it over, and then we have to flip the roles so that we are in control, and now we can systematically oppress white folk. Can anybody give me an example of true reverse racism anywhere in the United States? Can anybody give me an example of true reverse racism? I give you a million dollars if you can show me a true case of reverse race. Show me somewhere in America where black folks invaded the institution, took it over, and now systematically oppress white folks. Do you know of one? Do you know of one? See, this is why we have to expose and destroy. We have to expose and destroy false concepts that are put forth into the universe by white supremacy that try to make the victims of the system look like the perpetrators of the system. We have to expose and destroy. Now, let's keep on going. So brothers, remember that. According to the Supreme Court case, Turner versus Rogers 2011, they cannot treat an incarcerated black man as a case of voluntary unemployment. While you are in jail, black man, you need to know this. While you are in jail, black man, 
Make sure your lawyer, your public pretender has your child support case modified. You have a right to have your child support modified while you are in prison. It must drop. It must drop to almost next to nothing because you are incarcerated without the ability to pay. You don't even make minimum wage in prison because a prisoner is the slave of the state by definition. The prisoner is the slave of the state by definition. So make sure your lawyer or your public pretender gets your child support case modified. Too often when brothers go to jail, we focus on getting out of jail. And you should. We focus on getting out of jail and you should, but you also need to focus on your child support case. Don't keep letting that child support run. You're going to be down for five years. You're going to be down for 10 years. You're going to be down for 15 years. You don't want to come back and owe a quarter million dollars that you cannot pay off. Make sure you get your child support case modified while you are in custody. Facts. 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 Let's keep on going. Failure to pay child support cannot be charged if it can be proven that the father cannot pay. Did y'all hear that, brothers? This is the Supreme Court case. Look it up. Turner versus Rogers 2011. The United States Supreme Court say you cannot charge him with criminal contempt of child support if he cannot pay. So, brothers, we got the organized. This is why I'm hoping Tyrese gets behind this. He don't have a problem paying his child support. I want to be clear about that. But I want him to get behind this for the brothers who are not as blessed as he. Because the Supreme Court has already said that if a man can't pay, he cannot be charged with criminal contempt. So if a man cannot be charged with criminal contempt for failure to pay, why are so many black men going to jail for failure to pay when they can't? When the Supreme Court overturned that seven years ago, we must fight for the law. We must fight to use the law to protect us. Voluntary unemployment. Ain't no such thing as no voluntarily unemployed black man. You got the Latinos over here, illegal immigrants over here. You got everybody in America taking the jobs that should be going to black folks. I ain't got nothing against the Mexicans, but they import the Mexicans to take the jobs from black folks. Y'all do this on purpose. Y'all cloud the economic reality with aliens and immigrants. Y'all cloud the economic reality with aliens and immigrants to prevent black men from getting gainful employment. Not employment, gainfully employed. Gainfully employed means the fact that you have a job, you can gain some food, you can gain a home, you can gain some clothing, you can gain control over your child support. We need black men to be gainfully employed, but you don't want to gainfully employ us, so you bring in low-wage earning immigrants. You bring in low-wage earning immigrants. You bring in low wage earning immigrants to make sure that black men can't even make a penny an hour. Y'all talk about stand for the pledge, stand for the national anthem. You Negroes then lost your mind. You Negroes then lost your mind. Only 46% of incarcerated parents have a high school diploma. Only 46% of incarcerated parents have a high school diploma. The child support enforcement system increased the number of black mothers who received child support. Listen to this statistic. I want to show you how the Bill Clinton crime bill used child support to help swell up the jails. Check this out. From 1990 to 2002, from 1990 to 2002, 12 years, stay with me, from 1990 to 2002, the number of black mothers receiving child support went from 30% to 50%. From 1990 to 2002, the number of black mothers receiving child support went from 30% to 50%. You want to know why? In the 80s, they started laying black men off. 
if there's no romance, there's no finance. If there's no romance, there's no finance. If there's no romance, there's no finance. So the black man's inability to pay led him to leave his woman out of shame and led many black women to kick their men out of the house for disdain. So they started unemploying black men in the 80s, leading to the destabilization of the black family. Okay? And then with the black man out the house, the black woman needs money to take care of the kids. She's also angry that the black man can't do for her what the white man can do for the white woman. So she takes him to child support court. She takes him to child support court. There is a direct relationship between unemployment and child support. A black man who can't find work can't pay. If you can't find work, you can't pay. If you can't find work, you can't pay. And what bothers me is we still going to the same people. We going to the same people that incarcerated our ancestors against their will. We going to the same courts that used to hang black people. We go into the same courts that dehumanize black people. We go into the same courts that castrated black people. We go into the same courts that made it illegal for black people to learn. We go into the same courts that cursed us to free us. A black man and a black woman ain't got no business going to no courts of the United States to solve they family issues. Why are black family issues being decided by white people? Why are black family issues being decided by white people? Why are black family issues being decided by white folks? Check this out. 2002. 2002, for the first time in history, black men made child support history. 2002, the year was 2002. For the first time in 2002, the number of black mothers receiving child support outnumbered the amount of black mothers who did not receive child support. Let me say it again. Let me say it again. In 2002, the number of black mothers receiving child support for the first time outnumbered the number of black mothers who did not receive it. We already know why. Permanent paternity laws coming with a name or social or you ain't getting no services. Okay? An unemployment of black males in the Bill Clinton crime bill. Between 1987 and 1997, between 1987 and 1997, the payment rate for never married women doubled from 10% to 20%. See, what we ain't paying attention to is the 1990s was, okay, let's break it down. The 1970s was the decade of the deindustrialization of the black high school. That's the 1970s. The 1960s was the end of the black power struggle. The 1970s was the deindustrialization of the black high school. The 1980s was the mass unemployment of black men. The 1990s, mass incarceration of black men. The 1980s, mass unemployment of black men. The 1990s, mass incarceration of black men. I'm going to say it again. The 1980s was the decade of unemployment. And the 1990s was the decade of locking up the black men that you unemployed and laid off in the 1980s. Facts. So-called war on drugs. So-called war on drugs. You took all the jobs out the black community. You took all the jobs out the black community. You took all the jobs out the black community. And then the CIA, Cocaine Import Agency, the CIA, Cocaine Import Agency, the CIA, Cocaine Import Agency, brought the crack and the heroin and the opium to the ghetto. What will an unemployed man do if you bring him drugs? I don't care if he's black. I don't care if he's white. I don't care if he's brown. I don't care if he's tan. I don't care if he's Chinese, Arab, Jewish, Mexican. 
If a, if a man can't take care of his family and you bring him drugs, what do you think he going to do with them drugs? Ain't but two things he going to do. I don't care what color he is. He going to sell it or he going to use it. He going to sell it or he going to use it. He going to sell it or he going to use it. You know this. And see what, what, see, what is so trifling about racism is racism creates problems for black men and then turns around and say these problems exist because of the black man's genetic deficiency in potentialities. In other words, we're going to make, make black people poor, but we're going to say they're poor because they're black. We're going to make black people homeless, but we're going to say they're homeless because they're black. We're going to miseducate black people's kids and we're going to say that they can't read because they're black. So what racism does is it create the circumstances. Racism creates the circumstances that gives rise to a particular set of conditions and then blames the DNA of the victim for the conditions created by the system. I said racism creates a certain set of circumstances that give rise to a certain set of conditions and then they will blame the DNA of the black man for conditions that grew out of circumstances that the system created. And this is why I don't like ignorant black people speaking for the rest of us. This is why I don't like ignorant black people speaking for the rest of us. This is why I don't like ignorant black people speaking for the rest of us. You got to know what you talking about. We didn't make ghettos. Ghettos was made for us. We didn't make poor schools. Poor schools were made for us. We didn't make the jails. The jails were made for us. We didn't create welfare. Welfare was made for us. Let me calm down. I'm getting hype up in here catching that African Holy Ghost. Let's talk about the war on drugs. Don't worry, we're going to get to the phone in a minute. 8444, Dr. Umar. 8444, Dr. Umar. 8444, Dr. Umar will be the call in number in just a minute. I'm not going to use the uh, Black Parent Teleconference number because all y'all going to be on there yelling and screaming. Ain't nobody going to be able to talk. So this way, when you call that number, I can hang you up. When you get out of hand, I can let you know when your time is up. Now, let me clarify. You need money to raise children. And in no way, shape or form am I saying black women do not have a right to receive support. I am not saying that. OK, I want to be very clear. Just like I will tell you, some children need special ed if they're deaf. Some children need special ed if they're blind. Some children need special ed if they're autistic. Some children need special ed if they have a speech and language impairment. Some children need special ed if they're truly intellectually disabled. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about who? So-called ADHD, so-called conduct disorder, so-called emotional disturbance, so-called mild mental retardation, so-called reading disability, so-called math disability. And when I talk about child support to my beautiful black sisters, and when I talk about child support to my beautiful black sisters, I'm not saying y'all don't have a right to receive support. I'm not saying you don't have a right to ask the courts if the man won't help you out. I'm saying that it is disingenuous. It is disingenuous for a black woman to have a baby by a black man who you know can't provide for the child and then take that man to court knowing he will be charged with felony criminal contempt and sent back to jail. I'm saying that it is unfair for you to have a baby by a man who you knew could not pay. You knew his situation when you got pregnant and then you take him to child support, he gets charged with criminal contempt and you bust him back to jail. I'm saying that's not fair. If that's not you, I'm not talking about you. If you a decent sister and most of you are and you asking the father to help you out and he just trifling and he has money to help you out and he doesn't want to assuming you ain't keeping him from his children because I'm going to be honest with you you don't let a man see his kids I don't feel he's obligated to pay child support I'm going to say it again you can quote me quote me please if you deny a man his children if you woman enough to keep him from his children, 
If you are woman enough to keep a man from his children, then be woman enough to raise him without his money. But don't demand money and then not let a man see his children. That is trifling. That is trifling. I'm going to keep it gangster today. I'm riding for my incarcerated brothers locked down. I'm riding for my incarcerated sisters locked down. I'm riding for the juveniles locked down. We didn't ask to be here. I don't give a damn what excuses y'all making. I said we didn't ask to be here. We shouldn't even be having no conversation about no U.S. criminal justice system. I don't respect no law that I did not have a hand in making. I don't respect no law that I did not have a hand in making. It's raining outside. That's always a sign of good luck. Okay. We're going to talk about that once we open up the phone lines. Because there's a lot of women out there who don't let their father see the children. Ain't that right? A lot of y'all. Conscious community sisters too. So, war on drugs. 14% of drug users were black. According to federal statistics, 14% of drug users are black. 37% of the people arrested for drug use are black. If we are only 14% of the users, how can we be nearly half of those arrested? Crime is painted with a black brush. And innocence is painted with a white brush. Crime is painted with a black brush. And innocence is painted with a white brush. <clears throat> sister Keisha said, child support and custody, two different issues. Not to me, Sister Keisha. It ain't different. If you got a right to receive money, a man got a right to receive his child. If you got a right to receive money, a man got a right to receive his child. See, we got to ask ourselves, are we going to act like black people or are we going to act like white folks? Because I believe in justice. What do you believe in? I believe in justice. I believe if you want a man to pay for his kids, he should have he should have a right to see his baby. That's justice. Justice is balanced. Justice is fair. I want justice. I don't want the woman getting over on the man. I don't want the man getting over on the woman. Why can't we have justice? What's with this lopsided one side win all or lose all? Where do we get this from? That's not us. Where do we get this lopsided thing where the man should dominate the woman, the woman should dominate. No, how about justice? You know why we don't talk about justice? The reason we don't want no justice is because we don't care about each other. That's why we don't care about justice. See, justice only exists among people who care about each other. When you don't care about each other, you don't care about no justice. You want to take his money, not let him see his children. Fellas want to see the kids, don't want to pay child support. How about he pays child support and he sees his kids? Justice. African people, we're about justice. We're not about getting over. We're not about revenge. The problem with Negroes is most of us function on cycles of revenge and pain. Revenge and pain. The average Negro in America, your whole life is cycles of revenge and pain. She got me. I'm going to get her back. He got me. I'm going to get him back. Revenge and pain. Revenge and pain, which means we are always at war with each other which means we are always at war with each other. revenge and pain revenge and pain get over that that is killing us we can't keep living on a cycle of revenge and pain new york city new york city new york city queens harlem staten island boogie down bronx brooklyn 80% of people stopped in New York City by the police. Random stops. 80% were black folks. That don't, that don't even sound like it could be true. That statistic, half the people, first of all, white folks are the majority of New York City. White folks are the majority of New York City. They are the majority. If white folks are the majority of New York, 
How in the hell can 80% of the people stopped by the cops be black in a city that is predominantly white? This is apartheid. New York City is living under apartheid. The city is mostly white, but 80% of the people stopped by the cops are African. Check this out. New York City. I didn't know it was this bad, New York. But I will be in Queens December 3rd. Get your tickets. The Prince of Pan-Africanism will be in Queens December 3rd. Sunday, December 3rd. The Prince of Pan-Africanism will be in Queens pre-Kwanzaa Power Lecture. And we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about this. I'm going to go into child support, custody, criminal incarceration, and plea bargain. Child support, custody, criminal incarceration, and plea bargain. Okay. Check this out. 85% of the people stopped in New York City who were frisked were black. They only frisked 8% of the white folks they stopped. Did y'all hear that? Only 8% of the white folks stopped in New York by the cops were frisked. Eight. Eight, eight, but 85% of the black folks stopped in New York City were frisked by the cop. New York City is under apartheid. New York City is under apartheid. And I'm going to challenge the New York City black conscious community to stop its intellectual masturbation and start doing something about the real life issues affecting. Let me say this to my conscious brothers and sisters. We are not making a difference. Let me say it again. We are not making a difference. Let me say it again. We are not making... A, I know you think you are, but you're not. You're giving people information, knowledge, details, history... But until you organize and build institutions, until you organize and build institutions, until you organize and build institutions, I don't care how much lectures you do, how many documentaries you do, how many radio shows you do, how many Kwanzaa events you do, how many summer Shea Butter festivals you do, until you begin to organize and build institutions, you are not relevant to black people. Look what I got. United States Riot Commission Report. The United States Riot Commission Report. Y'all remember this? Report of the National Advisory Commission on Civil Disorders. Y'all remember this, right? From all the riots of the 60s, the president put together a commission, 1968, right before they killed King, to find out why black people were so angry. This is it. This is an original copy. To find out why black folks were so angry, they put this together. On July 29th, 1967, President Lyndon Baines Johnson appointed a special commission of distinguished Americans under Governor Otto Kenner of Illinois to search for the roots of the rising militancy in our country. Okay? Lyndon Baines Johnson put together a commission to search for the roots to the rising militancy in the United States of America and the widening gap between white and Negro Americans after seven months of investigation. It took them seven months to find out what we already know. And this is the result of that investigation. Let's look inside. Let's look inside. 
Patterns of Disorder. They got Tampa, Florida, Cincinnati, Ohio, Atlanta, Georgia, Newark, New Jersey, Northern New Jersey, Plainfield, New Jersey, New Brunswick, New Jersey. They got a lot of New Jersey in here. New Jersey must have been popping back in the 60s. Shout out to my Jersey family. Y'all must have been popping back in the 60s. And then they have Detroit. But I want to see, okay, what can be done? 288. Let's see what they said can be done. What can be done? Effective, listen to this. We need effective communication between ghetto residents and local government. Effective communication between ghetto residents and local government. Number two, we need improved ability of local government to respond to the needs and problems of ghetto residents. We need improved ability of local government to respond to the needs and problems of ghetto residents. Expanded opportunities for indigenous leadership. Expanded opportunities for indigenous leadership to participate in shaping decisions and policies which affect their community. Do you know what they're talking about? This is where they say, appoint bougie Negroes. This is how you got all the black politicians of the 70s. This is how you got all the black politicians of the 70s. This is how you got all the black politicians of the 70s. They said, put the Negroes in charge. If you put the Negroes in charge, Negroes won't realize white folks still in charge. If you put Barack Obama in the White House, if you put Barack Obama in the White House, Negroes will think that they in control. This is where that come from. If you want to stop the riots, let Negroes oppress Negroes. If you want to stop the riots, let the Negroes oppress the Negroes. It's all here. That's why I have the unapologetically African library. Once the school is open, you'll be able to come in because I got rare books. I got books that ain't even in print no more. This ain't in print no more. You don't find this. Okay. I got all types of stuff that you won't find anymore. Okay. But y'all will have access to that once we open up the library as soon as we find a school. Okay. Now, since 1970, check this out. Since 1970, this is government statistic. Since 1970, the number of drug arrests went from 320,000 to 1.6 million today. Did y'all hear that? Drug arrests in America. Drug arrests in America went from 320,000 in 1970 to 1 1.6 million today. How do you go from 320,000 drug arrests in 1970 to almost 2 million today? They deliberately targeted black men for unemployment, drug abuse and sales, mass incarceration as a pretext to extermination. Government statistics. Black people are arrested 11 times more than white folks for the same crimes. Black people are more likely to wait in prison longer before they see the judge. Black people are more likely to be plea bargained, and those plea bargains are a sham. And in New York City, black people living in New York City are 33% more likely Excuse me, black people in New York City spend 33% more time in prison than white folks for the same crimes. 80% of people in the criminal justice system, 80% of black folks in the criminal justice system don't have access to a lawyer. They are dependent on the public pretender. 80% of black folks in the criminal justice system have to depend on the public defender. Did y'all hear that, brothers and sisters? 80%. 80%. Now, 
With that being said, I want to talk about the gangster rappers. I want to talk about the gangster rappers for a minute. All you cooning ass rappers who go around teaching our kids that selling drugs is cool. Using drugs is cool. Killing other black men is cool. This is what you sell to our children in your white owned music. I think that the gangster rappers should be required by the black community. I think the gangster rappers should be required by the black community to contribute to a liberation fund to help get black men and women out of jail. To help get black men and women out of 